in a world not unlike this one, but in some ways entirely different, unrecognisable in fact. There lived a boy.
<laughs> Chapter one, the trouble with newborns. Well, um, excuse me. Yes? You think you could just skip forward to the part about adolescence? Adolescence? Oh, no, my dear. There is no chapter in this manual for adolescence. In fact, there is no manual for those horrible creatures. But if you do want my advice, run for your lives! And it wasn't just them. Others too had noticed that Caleb was different, that he changed. Well, if you don't mind me saying, he's a funny thing, that Caleb. <laughs> what do you mean, funny? Well, he's a teensy bit on the peculiar side. In what way peculiar? <laughs> Is that a serious question? How long have you got? Well, you know, he's got a bit unusual. A little off centre, you know. Cookie. They all go a bit weird at that age. Well, of course they do, but they're weird and then they're killer. <laughs> I'm sure he'll just grow out of it. Yeah, well, I wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, mind you, I did always used to say, you were a bit of a weird phase when you were younger and you turned out all right. Perhaps you could look into some... Uh, yes. Uh, never mind. They sought advice from experts. We've run a variety of different tests and we can safely say there is nothing medically wrong with him. Nothing? Nothing at all. He's, he's perfectly well. Well, that is a puzzle. I suppose you could always look into a... Caleb, tell me about your dreams. Come now, Caleb, don't be frightened. Tell me your deepest, darkest thoughts. Well, lots of deep, dark thoughts whisked through his mind, so fast he couldn't hold on to any of them long enough to tell anyone. But there were certainly creatures with more than four legs, small spaces and darkness. But come now, you can trust me, Caleb. But Caleb didn't want to tell anyone. Uh, I don't really remember my dreams. There's absolutely nothing wrong with him. Are you sure? And not even one single unusual dream. Not one. If there is something, which I'm sure there isn't, but if there is, I'm sure you will just, uh, grow out of it. See, the funny thing was, is that Caleb's parents, they'd never really considered the possibility that the problem with their son might actually just be them. <laughs> them with their... Oh, don't worry about it, Caleb. Just make sure next time you get it, um, right. And their... <laughs> oh, don't worry. Just next time do it, uh... Better. Don't we really? We, we don't mind just so long as it's perfect. <laughs> so long as we're perfect and seem to be perfect. <gasps> Especially by the neighbours at number 34 and Mrs. Fertile. And every time they said it, he would feel a flutter and his stomach would sort of flip over and the pressure would build and the fast feelings would start. And Caleb wanted so much for his parents to stop. And Caleb knew how to make his parents stop. Caleb would take a deep breath and he would make his parents stop. He would take a deep breath and he would sing. We have some news for you. Um, 
We have an important visitor for you today. A million questions running through his head. Thoughts, problems, worries, fears. Um, a visitor? Who? Someone very special. Oh, Mum, it's not Aunt Bonnie, is it? Oh, Caleb, haven't you changed? I mean, grown up. Oh, no, it's not Aunt Bonnie. Someone even more special. Mr. Kapitowski! Now, Mr. Kapitowski's travelling show was famous. Not just locally, it was world famous. And if you hadn't heard of it, well, you just pretended that you had. Have you ever seen him in flat? No. Heart, just for a second, and warmed it. Time to 
to go, young Caleb. Uh, don't worry, Mrs. Um, <laughs> it'll be fine. I'll see to it personally. He's about to have the most wonderful adventure. There is absolutely nothing to worry about. Except the heavy rain. What about the rumbling thunder? Creatures with more than four legs, small spaces, and, and being alone in the dark. And off they went. Caitlin's mother watched as they disappeared into the distance. And then she went in, watered her plants, made herself a hot cup of tea, sat down, put her feet up, and let out a contented sigh. And got stuck into a juicy romance novel. The Journey. <laughs> didn't exactly send me away. Uh, did they sign the contract? Yes. Well, they sent you away then. No, please, please, just, just don't say that. Oh, no, don't be upset. It's best to know the truth. I'm different too, that's why I'm here. It takes a while to adjust, but you will. He obviously likes your act. What do you do? Oh, I just sing. Hey, what about you? And then she showed him.
See you tomorrow. Look, can't we all? Well, no, I don't think I can. Oh, you're just not looking hard enough then. You only need to look into someone's eyes to see where they're headed. Really? You look deep into the eyes and they tell you everything you need to know. Look into mine. Um, no, 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 I, I can't. Uh, let me look into yours no, then. No, maybe another day. Why? I, I don't know, I'm just... I'm just tired from the journey. What, are you trying to hide? Nothing, nothing. Honestly, I'm fine. You have to find me to show me. One day. One day. Okay then, show me your act. I love singing. I've always wanted to be able to sing. Okay, um... <clears throat> and just as Caleb was about to sing for the girl, Kapitalski appeared. As if he'd been there all along. Watching and listening, seeing and hearing everything. I thought I'd put the boys straight to work, sir. Tomorrow we work, now we sleep. Good night, Caleb. Goodbye, and um, see you tomorrow. Hey, she seems nice. You don't want to bother with the others. You just concentrate on what you're doing. You have a special gift, like they all do. You can't have any distractions. Uh, Mr. Kapitalski, I was with No more questions, boy. It's time to rest. This is where you will sleep. What? <coughs> In that box? Well, yes. You all have boxes. It's easily big enough. No. I, I, don't, I don't think I could go in there, Mr. Kapitalski. Why ever not? Because it looks dark. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? He wanted to scream, his heart's racing. I'm scared of lots of things. Please, please just don't make me go in there. In you go. Don't waste my time. sat alone with the fast feelings rushing through his mind and the silence and the long lonely night it was the longest night ever each moment dragged on and on and it was so very dark in the black box you know it was darker than dark caleb sat awake thinking about kapitowski and the dark and the girl who could see tomorrow and the small spain and the darkness and what she might have seen if caleb just let her look into his eyes each night got longer and darker, and the rehearsals got harder and harder, and the pressure just grew and grew. And then, morning boy, wakey wakey, time to get up. Morning, I trust you slept well, off you get. Today is the day we've been working for. Today you get to perform in Kapitowski's world famous show. For the first time. What, today? But why, why? Because Mr. Capitals is not mine. No, I'm not ready. Well, you'd better be. Everyone's caring on you, especially me. Yeah. How long till the show? Plenty of time. Time for a bit of breakfast? With the rest of the cast? Oh, hello. A short rehearsal. Oh. A spot of lunch, but nothing too heavy. A costume fitting? Sand check? Oh, la 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 la. Better. <coughs> La 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 la. And the audience are all Mr. Kapitalski, I'm not going <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you tonight my newest act. Performing for you for the very first time, I'll give you the boy with the true voice. Crowd to 
gone and it was just them. You did really well. Oh, do you think? For a first time, you did really well. Hey, it's all just a bit of a blur. I just opened my mouth and hope for the best. First time's always the worst. Oh, thank you. <coughs> hey, I wish my mum could have seen me tonight. Oh, if she had, she'd have probably puked into her own mouth in disgust. What do you call that? Um, well, that I, thing you just did. Um, I was... That thing you just did that was supposed to be singing. <coughs> Look, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Cabot. Sorry. sorry. Those people paid good money to listen to that. I honestly thought it was good. You to shut it. I'm sorry, Mr. Cabot. Oh, you will be. You know, it isn't good enough to be okay, reasonable, good. You have to be perfect. Do you understand me? Perfect. Caleb's stomach flipped, and for a second those fast feelings grabbed him. Tomorrow, you will be better. Do you understand me? Yes, yes, Mr. Kapatowski. Now get to bed. she wanted to say was
just listen. And so do I. So do I. And then she remembered the moment she had said goodbye to her son. <laughs> felt warm and the fear went away and there was no more pressure and there was no more pain but the pain never went away for long slowly but surely these feelings would creep back up on Caleb the feelings would get faster and the sounds would get louder and when the pressure got too much Caleb would climb inside the black box and there in the quiet darkness Caleb would make his pain stop the black box which once used to frighten him so much slowly became the one place that he felt safe in the dark, where no one could see him. As the days passed, Caleb spent more and more time in the black box, and less and less time out of it, only really coming out and performing the show. Inside the black box, Caleb knew how to make his pain stop. It was something Caleb could control. He didn't like what he was doing, but he couldn't help it. He felt like he had to do it. No one could know. So he hid himself and his secrets away in the 
would let himself worry about Caleb. Wonder whether he was putting too much pressure on him. And sometimes, Mr. Kapitowski would think, maybe he should just take Caleb back home to his mum and dad. Amy, <laughs> Mrs. Um, <laughs> I've brought Caleb home. <laughs> so, is he back on the road to success? Well, not quite. You see, um, it came to my attention that... Uh, Caleb was not quite right for the show. No, sorry, the, um, the show is not right for Caleb. So, what exactly does that mean? Well, you see, we, we, we could keep pushing him, make him perform day in, day out, but that might lead to him not wanting to sing at all. Or even worse, he, he could lose his voice entirely, <laughs> and, and that would be a tragedy in itself. What did you want to say before you left? <laughs> it was only a show after all, and Caleb was just a boy. But then again, Mr. Kapatowski would think about the... But what did you mean you failed to get my son back on the right path? Well, you, you mean, Mr. Kapatowski, that our daughter isn't back on the road to success? Well, and then you would worry about what the Board of Travelling Shows would say. It is not good enough. You have fallen ten places in the lead table of traveling shows in the past twelve months. It is simply not good enough. If we do not see an improvement, if we do not see success, we will shut you down. Please, Kayla. The audience is arriving. I can make you brilliant. Mr. Kapitowski thought a little more about the boy in the black box. And then an idea crept into his mind and played a little. And then... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you tonight my newest act. The one. The only. The boy. In the black Alone here in the darkness, I'll hold you close and keep you safe until the morning. And the way Caleb sang was the most beautiful singing Kapitowski had ever heard. It was different to all the other times. It was as if he was hearing him for the first time. And the sound whisper is in, brushing past his brain down through his veins where it stopped at his heart just for a second, and touched it. One day. Caleb? Caleb, are you in there? Please come out. We hardly see you anymore. I miss you. Hey, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine, honestly. Please, um, I have something to ask you. What is it? I think today might be 
one day. Well, I don't understand. Remember? You said you'd let me look into your eyes one day. Well, the day seems as good a day as any. So what do you say? No, no. Caleb, I know you don't want to. And I know you're frightened. But if you could just find the strength to take a chance on me. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. Trust me, Caleb. He thought for a moment. And in that moment, a thousand fragments rushed through his mind. Caleb could have stayed inside the black box. Shut and hid himself away. But something stopped him. Something kept Caleb still, calm and still. He turned to face the girl and she saw everything. Well, what can you see? I'm the girl I can see tomorrow, remember? You only have to look into someone's eyes to see where they're headed, right? That's right. So where am I headed? You're on a dark, dangerous <laughs> and lonely path, Caleb. But up ahead of you, the path will split. And you'll have to choose which way to go. You can carry on the way you're going. Or you choose another path. Go another way. You have a choice. Can you see me? Yes. I mean, I mean, can you, you really see me? September, we bring some forms into schools and you all tick a box to say what's most important in your lives. What issues do you face that you think need dealing with by council, by government, by teachers, by whoever you think. In 2012, mental health came in the top five. So the Youth Council wanted to do something about that and they came up with their campaign, I Love Me. Anybody heard of I Love Me? Youth Councils, put your hands in the air. Thank you. I Love Me is a campaign to raise self-esteem and confidence. We've tried to tackle bullying, we've tried to tackle the media and, and looking at body image in the media and, and trying to stop photoshopping of people um, to make them look wonderful and six foot tall and thin. Um, we then did Make Math again in 2013 and again mental health came in the top five and we weren't sure why. So we did a bit of digging, and we went around and, and we said to the NHS and CAMS, which is the Children and Adolescent Mental Health Service, why is mental health a problem? And they gave us some statistics. 
And one of those statistics was that self-harm has presented in accident and emergency more than 200% more over the last year. Now that's just people who have cut themselves that deep that they need medical attention. That's not all the people who perhaps just scratch or drink something they shouldn't or overuse alcohol. Um, so we were slightly worried. So we went to Oldham Theatre Workshop and asked them, commissioned them, to put on a play for us. And I think they've done an amazing job. So give them a round of applause. If you ask these councillors in this room, that it, it's far beyond our expectations of what we wanted. Um, we hope it hasn't distressed people too much. Um, if it has, I'm sure some information will be given later on. I will be around to um, answer any questions. If you've got some questions about the new council, or you just want to come and give us some feedback on the play, or you want to speak to me privately, that's fine. I will be over here at the front. Um, but I just want we to take this opportunity to mention a website. I'm not sure if it's on your school servers, but there's a website called kooth.com. K-O-O-T-H dot com. <coughs> And on that website is an online counselling service, lots of information and forums for you to go on and get information. It's not about going on there if you think you're stressed or pressured. If you are, go to cooth.com, it's really good. What this play was about was raising awareness of self-harm, self not trying to solve it. The problem we've got is nobody wants to talk about it because it's secretive. It's done in a black box. That's the metaphor. But it's done out of sight. What we need to do is raise awareness so people will learn to talk about it. If you notice that one of your friends is perhaps not themselves, feeling a bit down, they're not acting in a way that you would normally expect them, go and chat to them. Be that person who they can go and talk to and be supported by. Point them in the direction of Cooth.com. Oldham Youth Council actually commissioned, they pay for Cooth.com for just Oldham young people. <coughs> So you, you've got that service there. Even if it's just you, anybody got exams coming up? I know you're year nine and year 10. Anybody got mocks, exams with GCSEs? No? Next year when you've got them, one person at the back, thank you. Um, next year when you've got them, coos.com will be amazing. There'll be an online counselor sat there, ready to talk you through all that stress and pressure that you've got dealing with. I'm gonna hand you back to Becky, if you wanna really watch
So pressures B. What pressures? What what is out there? Yes. Gentleman in the middle there. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. You have your stretch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Doing well for yourself. Yeah, carry on. What were you going to say then? Yes, doing well for yourself. Absolutely. The self expectation of what you, the pressure of putting on yourself, what you think you have to achieve. Anything else? Yes. Absolutely. Pressure from your parents to do well, pressure from your peers to do well. Yes. How you look. Absolutely. Chris mentioned earlier that in the past we've we've done campaigns that are about self self uh, image, body image. Absolutely, the pressure that is on young people and on, on everyone to look to look a certain way, to, to look good. Absolutely. That that is a, a, a really big pressure that I think a lot of young people feel. Anything else? One more. What about education pressure? Academic pressure to do well in exams. Yeah? Social pressure, peer pressure from friends. There are loads, loads, loads of different types of pressure and situations that, that we find ourselves in. In Caleb's story, we saw him pressured by his parents. And then we saw the character of Mr. Kazakowski, who's actually a metaphor, I think. Anyway, my interpretation is that he's a, a metaphor for all of those different pressures that we get in life. So Caleb's story is just one example, but those feelings that he had are not just one example. Those feelings can come from loads and loads of different types of pressure. That's really important to remember that we, it, there's no right or wrong with what makes us feel like that. Okay, the second statement then, if you remember, if you agree, stand up, if you disagree, take that down, not sure, somewhere in between. There are lots of services available for young people who might be dealing with poor mental health. There are lots of services available for young people who might be dealing with poor mental health. <laughs> Those of you who were 
dependent on how you behave. So before we, I explain what's going to happen next, I just want to give one last thank you to all the people that have had the utensils that sponsored that play. Uh, we've got Becky, who's an ex-student of North Tennessee School, so that's what a great role and role model. I know when Miss Berry was helping to set up, she was reminding me that particularly in the 9M band, there are an awful lot of you that have chosen drama as an option. Well, you couldn't have had a better performance to look at and look at the gestures and the voice and the projection and the staging. So we'll be thinking about all of those things. Fantastic. Can we give them one last round?